Now I'd like to welcome our guest for this hour, trial attorney Michael Jaffer. All right, tell me your thoughts, Michael, and keeping in mind and comment on the fact that there are two men, four women on this jury, all about the same age, 40 to 60s, but the uh, demographics, does that make a difference? Absolutely, because as I said before when I've analyzed this case, you, you know, I'm assuming that some of the women that are on this jury would have delivered a, a child at that hospital and would have some affectionate feelings towards that hospital. So at the beginning of this case, I thought to myself, the more women on this panel, the better it is for the, for the hospital. So I believe that the presentation by both attorneys were excellent. This, the case did not stick for me, Judge Ashley, and at the expense of looking like the Darth Vader analyzing this case, I don't believe that the, that the, that the hospital should be held responsible for $200 million for Ms. Kowalski. It was tragic. Uh, but after looking at the evidence, looking at, look at uh, looking at all the testimony, the way they treated her daughter in the hospital, the care that which they put towards her, 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 her daughter, I don't believe they're responsible for $200 million. Same exact fact pattern, same exact things happen. Everything exactly the same, minus the fact that Ms. Kowalski took her own life. Would we be looking at this case? Would the demand be $200 million? Absolutely not. If everything was exactly the same, but Ms. Kowalski had emotional distress, had to see therapy, but didn't take her life, this would be a $2 million case. So that's my opinion. And I do like and appreciate it. The defense during closing argument got into the numbers to say, if you do find us responsible for this or that, then here are the real damages, right? Here's what's reasonable and just, not the number that's been requested by the plaintiff. And then on some other counts, they said, and on these, we shouldn't be held responsible at all. Of course, we're going to see what this jury does. Gentlemen, stand by. I want to bring back in our attorneys, Michael Jaffer and Nima Romani, because Gentlemen, I want to talk about the extent of the injuries and what we are hearing from this neuropathologist. Compound fractures, injuries to the lung, rib fractures, bleeding in the chest, alive after the injuries. To me, this means that no matter what the defense says or what the defendant told police, it had to have been a hard hit with the vehicle. This could not have been a gentle little bump and oops, I don't know what I just ran over. These are significant injuries, Michael. Uh, he, he, to me, it seems like he was ran over by a truck. I mean, it's that simple, right? He, he didn't trip and fall. He didn't suffocate on, on alcohol. He didn't choke himself. He didn't have a brain aneurysm. He was run over. Uh, and it's blunt force trauma. This expert is doing a great job. He seems very, very low key, low energy, which is kind of what you wanted an expert of, you know, of this type of magnitude. Um, but it seems to me like the injuries, uh, I agree with you, Judge Ashley, it seems to me like he was run over. All right, before we get back to testimony in Wisconsin, still with us, Michael Jaffer. And All right, what do you think, Michael? And, you know, to me, anytime there's a video of the defendant speaking in their own words, I think jurors, that to me is a home run in terms of jurors getting real information to make a decision in the case. Judge Ashley, here's what I think. First of all, I fully agree with you. In my opinion on this, always goes back to the beginning of my career. A mentor of mine once said something to me, you hold your breath as an attorney every time your client opens their mouth. So in this situation, she opened her mouth before she even had an attorney. It happens all the time. There's dash cam video. So as her attorney, you are holding your breath and every single sentence that comes out of her mouth, it forecloses certain defense options that you have or that you were thinking about. And midway through the video, the first time you're watching it, you think you know the strategy and then the second half of the video dishevels your entire strategy. So that's what I think. I think that this video is very difficult for her. It forecloses certain options for her attorneys. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not a good thing uh, that the prosecution has fodder now. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think the fact when you say, hey, I don't know what happened, then as a state, you can say she doesn't even know what happened. She easily could have run over him with the truck, like we're alleging and saying the evidence shows she did. So. I don't know. This case, we're going to see what happens, and will she testify? That's another question I have. I don't think so, but yet she might choose to.